So a little bit, bit of background uh, on myself to kind of get started. Um, I'm originally from Australia, um, originally from Melbourne. So as a uh, kind of basketball New South Wales, don't hold that against me. Um, but I uh, wanted to just give you a little bit of background of, of kind of how I got to where I am right now. Um, I was involved with the Blackburn Vikings Club uh, in Victoria um, through my kind of uh, end of my junior basketball career in the senior basketball and, and my coaching. And then I, I made the move over here to the States um, back in 2012. Um, spent five years in uh, a role with, uh, with Wake Forest women's basketball during that stretch. Um, and then was fortunate enough in 2017 um, to be able to, to kind of join a new staff here at Davidson College um, in an assistant coaching role. A um, little bit of side background as well. Um, I kind of have an exercise science background, um, worked at Deakin uh, after my degree, and then I, I followed that, that up with some study over here as well um, while I was at Wake Forest. So um, kind of as, as Coach mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of um, game style related things um, as it pertains to kind of how, how we practice it and, and kind of what some would call a, a, a games approach to, uh, to coaching. Um, I'm going to change this for a second. Let's see if I can. All right. Okay. So, um, just a couple of things. Uh, firstly, I just want to kind of lay a bit of an outline of what I intend to talk about today. And uh, I'm going to fly through some things a little quicker just for, uh, for time's purposes. But um, as, a, as a kind of overarching goal of, of what we're kind of looking to talk about today, um, I really want to provide an example of how kind of our women's basketball program here at Davidson uh, approaches our practice and development. Um, I understand the context of college basketball is very different than, than what you uh, are probably typically dealing with um, in your environment there. So we'll talk about that a little bit first. Uh, I'm gonna kind of communicate what our intended style of play is. We'll kind of provide a bit of a framework for how we approach um, kind of implementing that style within um, our practice and game environment. Um, and then I do wanna talk about kind of what I believe we've done well with that and what I, I think we need to look to improve on. Uh, like, obviously, this is an iterative process. Um, we've had a lot of time to think about how we approach things, and um, I think that that will hopefully be interesting for you. And then um, kind of some things to think about and some misconceptions maybe about this style. Um, uh, as Coach said, um, I'm happy to answer any questions as we go. So um, please, if there's terminology-specific things, um, anything really, pop them in. We can, we can kind of break this up a little bit. Um, in that in that way as well. Um, so to kind of start with, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the the kind of context of college basketball um, in general. Just once again, it is a little bit different than than what you guys are used to. Um, some of you may have more or less familiarity with with the system, but um, in our scenario, we're an NCAA a Division One institution, um, and we're in the Atlantic Ten Conference. Um, now, from a, a roster perspective, we have 13 players on our roster. Um, in women's basketball, you can have up to 15 scholarships. Uh, men's basketball, you can have 13. Um, and they have uh, kindly made sure that everything is really equal here, and that, that comes in handy in, in some ways. Um, so we have 13 uh, players on scholarship, um, and those are spread across four classes. Um, so typically, someone spends about four years' time with us. Um, I'm going to go into a next slide shortly that kind of talks about just the yearly calendar and how that looks. Um, for our students at Davidson, um, we're a pretty kind of uh, academic rigorous institution. Um, so we actually have a, a, a pretty nice schedule as it relates to practice. So we have our own practice facility. Um, we practice every day at 445 um, and our limitations are solely as it relates to the NCAA and not um, facility availability, which is unbelievable. Even when I was at Wake Forest, that wasn't the case um, at that level. Um, from a staffing perspective, uh, we have a head coach, three assistants. We have members of support staff. Um, we have student managers. We have an athletic trainer, strength and conditioning coach, dietitian. Um, we have access to a mental performance coach and medical support staff. So um, in addition to that, we also have practice players. So we have uh, a group of guys that um, are able to practice with our ladies. Um, and they obviously come, come in, in handy as well. So 
kind of as as I talk about this, like I, I am recognizing that this is is a slightly different lens or context to to what you're dealing with. Um, but I'll do my best to touch on um, the ways that you're you're normally interacting with your players, whether that's representative training practice, whether that's in a camp setting for a state team, whatever that looks like. We can kind of um, try to tap into that as we go a little bit as well. So. Just real quick on kind of some of the, the calendar thing. I know there's a lot on this slide, but I'll just draw your attention to kind of the different phases. So I'm defining off season as when uh, students get to campus, but we're not in full training. So um, late mid to late August through the end of September, we're in kind of that off season mode. And we're allowed four hours per week on court through that stretch with our athletes. Um, in addition to that, they're allowed to do four hours of strength and conditioning. Um, so that's, that's kind of that context. From that point on, so essentially the, the end of September through till uh, when our season finishes, we're allowed 20 hours a week. Um, that does include our games. So games are allocated three hours per week. Um, so in general, what you'll find is most college programs will be practicing anywhere from 12 to, to 14 hours a week, um, in addition to some strength and conditioning, um, and then obviously their, their game segments. Um, the, the regular season is broken up into two stretches. There's a non-conference stretch where you essentially self-schedule those games and they can be uh, pretty sporadic. You um, can obviously schedule, uh, well, those are scheduled out of conference. And so you may play some big schools. So for this past year, we, we played some, some kind of BCS level schools like a Duke and a Florida and a Virginia Tech. And uh, we also played some more regional opponents through that stretch as well. And then as January rolls around, we play in conference play. Um, and then really at, at kind of the mid-major level, the goal is to, to kind of then win your conference and earn a bid to, to the NCAA tournament. Um, at the conclusion of the season, uh, up until when the girls leave school, we're allowed four hours a week. And then anything over the summer is completely voluntary. Our, our players are, are home during the summer, um, generally taking internships, doing a range of things, getting away from us a little bit. Um, if you have any questions on that, just pop into Jared and um, and I'm happy to kind of answer them as we move through the, the next couple of slides. Um, just one other thing. So this is our practice facility. I just wanted to kind of show this just in a context. This is a, our women's basketball uh, practice facility. On the other side of the wall is the men's facility. Um, our players have access to this um, essentially from 5 a.m. So they could be in here right now if they're on campus um, all the way through till about midnight. Um, they, have, they have a swipe card to get in here. So what I will say is as we've approached some of these things from a, um, from a more game concept within a practice, um, that doesn't mean that they're not necessarily getting some, some block reps of shooting or, or some other things that maybe happen in, in more individual settings um, as well. So just wanted to give you that context. I know facilities are sometimes tough to come by um, down in Australia. Um, so that this is, this is our context. 